the time has finally come to give our thrifted dollhouse a Halloween makeover. So I'm going to be turning this into an enchanted witch's cottage. I was heavily inspired by Witch House in Salem. I really love the look of it and that's kind of what inspired me when creating the look for this house. So we are going to just start by removing all of the elements that either need to be removed before painting or just elements that I don't plan on reusing in the final product. Removing these little hearts from the shutters was one of the most difficult tasks of this whole project. Those things were glued on there well. They were not supposed to be going anywhere, but I did pry them off. I just didn't see them in the final result. In fact, had they been like stars or crescent moons or something like that, I could have made that work. And that actually might be something that I go back and add. All in all, there were so many things that I still wanted to do when I was finished with this, which I think is gonna make it a really fun project to go back and revisit year after year and just kind of add on it and expand on what I've already created. These windows just did not fit for a spooky house vibe. So I ripped them out. I envisioned the same style windows as Witch House. So they are the traditional Tudor style leaded glass diamond pattern windows. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll know. If not, you'll see. And I made one mock window just to make sure before I ripped them all out that I could do it. It turned out really well. So I decided to go ahead and just pull them all out of there and remake them all. And I'm so happy I did because I think it's one of the things that makes the biggest impact on the outcome of this house. For the porch, I wanted it to look like it was just an old wooden porch. Now, if it hadn't been painted, I would have loved to have just used some wood stain on it, but because it was painted and I didn't want to attempt to use any kind of like paint remover, I decided just to kind of create that look using some different shades of brown paint. So the first layer that I did is this light brown. I then went over it with a dark brown and then you'll see kind of later on in the video, I decided to also dark wash it and I think it turned out pretty well. Once again with my favorite black paint, this is the Rust-Oleum Milk Paint in Eclipse. I love this paint because it's got a really nice matte brushed finish to it and there is no blue undertone. So that's kind of why I go to this one over and over again. This is not sponsored in any way, I just genuinely love this paint and I use it in a lot of my projects. I did a total of 
three coats on everything with this black paint just to get really nice solid coverage on the whole thing and I had a variety of different brush sizes so that I could do some of these really little detailed areas and it was definitely tedious, but I actually think painting's pretty relaxing. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that like a deal breaker on a project for you? Or do you enjoy sitting down and putting some music on and just painting the day away? For the dark wash on the porch, I just diluted down some of that black paint with a little bit of water and did a quick one over on it to give it a little bit more dimension and a little bit more of that wood look. And then onto the windows, I used a removable black vinyl because that's what I had on hand and I definitely knew I wanted to use black rather than white like the previous windows were. I went on Google and just searched for the pattern, downloaded the image and then loaded it into Design Space and resized it to the size of the windows we did it out and then I'll show you here in just a moment what we did to actually make the windows. I had some Mylar plastic on hand from when I previously made some reusable stencils and I thought it would work perfect for the windows. So thankfully these shapes were actually just in Cricut Design Space's shape library. I resized them to about what I needed. You'll notice that the design of the like lattice pattern doesn't go quite to the edges and that was kind of just me not measuring perfectly and it was totally fine because I knew that there was gonna be trim on the inside that would cover kind of all those edges. So this actually worked out very well using just a little bit of transfer tape, lining it up was probably the hardest part to get it transferred over. The door proved to be a bit trickier, so I used a little bit more of that vinyl. Because the windows were actually sandwiched between the two wooden pieces of door and then that was glued in place, I didn't wanna run the risk of trying to pull it out of there and breaking it because I didn't have a replacement for it. So I actually just used these strips of vinyl to cover up the white pieces. That's kind of what I did there. My head kept getting in the way, so I had to just show you a little snippet of it. And then here's a box of treasures that I got from Facebook Marketplace for 15 bucks. These are actually old collectible pencil sharpeners. Most of them are anyway. And they're just cool little brass pieces that are miniature. Some of them are probably to scale, some of them aren't. But I decided to use these two rocking chairs and this bench to use as some of my decor. Now, when I do the inside next year, I'll probably use some of the other things as well. I got this little picket fence and this bridge at a garage sale. 
probably paid less than a dollar for them. This little guy was at a garage sale for two bucks. They actually have that at Hobby Lobby still, so you can go buy that. The moss and then some dried florals. The moss, if you guys need moss, these big bags, the best place to get them is Joann's. They have the cheapest deal of any craft store I'd been to. And then my $10 twigs I made into a tree by literally just hot gluing them together. We're gonna use some of my fairy lights and some command strips and we're going to light this baby up. I really try to only use things that I have on hand. If you're a crafter, you know that your supply closet just kind of grows and grows. And so I went digging and found these little wooden squares. I needed some way to get my tree to stand up. So I hot glued it on there and then used a bit of Spanish moss on top of that to just kind of cover up the wood and then put Spanish moss all around the house. We're also gonna use some of our green moss around the house at our fence and then all the other pretty little details to make this thing look like an enchanted cottage. We of course had to reuse the broom that came with the house. I just used a little bit of gold craft paint to paint over the red thread on it so that it fit a little bit better aesthetically with our house. And then I decided to make a little wreath for the door using some grapevine, some hot glue, some dried florals. My camera died, so you kind of get the point. This is how it turned out. And then I used those same dried florals on either side of the porch to kind of look like flowers that went into dormancy. And I thought that was just a really cute little touch that made it look a little bit more realistic. Our spider web is definitely large uh, in scale, but you gotta have a spider web. Thank you. 